Hi everyone. In this video, I will show you how to set up the main shop page and product archive pages using the gem. The gem contains many useful options to control the appearance and functionality of your shop pages. Thanks to this, you can choose between different layouts for your product listings like justified grids for classic and clean style, masonry and metro style listings for a modern creative way of displaying your products, and many other layout options. A rich variety of different pre-built design skins for presenting products in your product listings extends creativity by designing your shop pages and accelerates your work. With additional features like secondary product image on hover, add to wishlist buttons, quick view option, and variation swatches you can be sure that your shop is optimized for better conversion. And, using fast and intuitive Ajax filters of different types like sidebar filters, hidden sidebar filters, or horizontal filters, your customers will enjoy their shopping experience on your website. Let's start with the basics. WooCommerce creates the main shop page automatically during the installation process. I can check it in the list of my pages. As you can see, the shop page has been already created and correctly assigned as WooCommerce main shop page. In case you cannot find this page in the list of your pages or the WooCommerce installation process has been dismissed, no worries. Let's check this example. Now I don't have a shop page in the list of my pages. All I have to do is just to create a new page, for example, I will add a page with the shop title. Of course, you can name this page as you wish, it is not required to name it shop. Ok, after publishing this page, I need to go to WooCommerce, Settings, Products, and select the page I have just created in the shop page field. After saving my selection, I return to the list of my pages. As I can see, now my shop page has been assigned as the WooCommerce main shop page. Please note, after assigning the page to serve as WooCommerce main shop page, this page changes from static to dynamic. It means that the content of this page is dynamically populated by the shop listing. If you visit this page on the front end, you will notice that this page is missing in the editor list of editable content parts. No worries, it is okay. As said, this page is now a dynamic page and its content is controlled by the shop grid settings in the gem. We will see it later. In the edit mode of the shop page, you will see the editor button. However, by clicking on this button you will get an error message. No worries, it is normal behavior. This message appears because the editor cannot recognize any static content area on this page. Again, the reason for this error is that this page is not static anymore. Still, you can control all parts of your main shop page except the content itself in the gems page options. As you can see, each part of the main shop page has its dedicated group of settings. By default, all these settings inherit the global settings made in theme options. By activating these settings in page options they can be individually adjusted only for the main shop page. For example, I can customize the appearance of the menu and header, main shop title area, and footer. Good. Now that my main shop page has been created, let's see how to set up the products to be displayed on this page. I go to theme options. WooCommerce Shop Grid Here I see the list of many settings to control the appearance of my product list on the main shop page. It is important to note that all these settings are applied not only to the main shop page. Automatically, these settings are applied also on all product archive pages like product categories to keep the shop looking consistent. Let's start with the layout. In Layout Source, I have an option to choose whether I wish to use the built-in settings to control my shop grid or to use a template built with the Gem Templates Builder. The Gem Templates Builder gives you almost unlimited possibilities to design and customize your main shop and product archives layouts. 
I have explained in detail how to use the Gem Templates Builder to build product archive templates in another video. Here I will concentrate on the Gem's built-in settings, so let's keep the layout source as built-in settings. In the layout type, I have three options for how to display my products. I can display the products as a grid, as a list, or as a classic grid. This is a legacy option that has been an essential part of the old versions of the gem. Let's keep the product grid as the layout type. In the content width setting, I can choose the width of the main container with my product grid. In the grid layout setting, I can choose between justified, masonry, and metro style grids. In the columns and gap settings, I can adjust the number of columns and the gaps between the products. Switching between different devices I can separately adjust these settings for tablets and mobiles. The product preset setting contains many pre-built design skins for displaying products in the shop grid. These skins are grouped into three groups depending on where and how to show the product caption. Caption below means that the product title, product meta, product price, and add to cart button will be shown below the product image. Caption on image means that these parts of the product caption will be displayed on top of the product image. And caption on hover means that the product caption will be displayed while hovering over the product image. Okay, the next setting activates the quick view option. It enables the shop visitor to preview the main product data directly on the main shop page without loading the product page. In the default sorting field, I can specify the product sorting on my main shop page. Sorting control on front end activates the sorting option for shop visitors. Category description position controls the position of the description content added to product categories. The category description can be displayed above the shop grid or below the shop grid. In the product caption group of settings, I can control different caption elements which can be displayed in the shop grid. By activating attribute swatches, I can add the displaying of variation swatches inside the products in my shop grid so the shop visitor can change between product variations directly in the shop grid without going to the respective product page. In the Add to Cart and Add to Wishlist group of settings I can control the appearance of Add to Cart and Add to Wishlist buttons in the products of my shop grid. In the Pagination group of settings, I can specify how many products should be displayed on one page and choose between three different pagination types. Show label settings give me the option to show or hide different labels on product images, like sale, new, or out of stock. I'll jump over the next two groups of settings, as I'll cover them in more detail later. Let's check the additional options. By activating the loading animation control I can choose between six different animation effects for the products in my shop grid, for example, the move up animation effect. The next setting is called Ignore Highlighted Products. Sounds mysterious, what should this mean? Let's jump to the edit screen of any product. In the page options of the product under the additional settings, you can set this product to be highlighted in the grid. This means that this product will be emphasized and displayed double bigger as other products. Like in this example. This is a cool way of attracting visitors' attention to some product highlights and making creative grids. However, this feature is controlled by the script. If you don't plan to highlight any products in your shop grid I'll recommend you keep this setting enabled as it disables the loading of an additional script. By activating the skeleton preloader I can enable the popular skeleton loading effect for the product items in my shop grid. And by activating the next two settings I can display only featured or only on sale products on my main shop page. After saving the settings I made, I go to the main shop page and check how it looks. Okay, all my settings have been applied correctly. Now let's take a look at some product categories. As we can see, the same shop grid settings have been applied here as well. Okay. So far so good. Now let's check how to configure the shop filters for my shop page. Having reliable fast product filters on the shop page is extremely important for optimizing shop conversions. Especially in the case of many different products, 
Having many different attributes the shop visitor should have an easy option to quickly filter the shop page to find the matching products. The gem includes two main filter options to be used on the main shop page. Let's explore these options. In theme options. WooCommerce. Shop Grid. I scroll down to the Filters section. As you can see at the moment all filters are disabled. Now I can activate the gem filters. These are the gem built-in filter options that are incorporated in the Shop Grid. But what if I want to use the classic approach by using WooCommerce sidebar widgets for product filtering? No problem at all. All I have to do is just to activate the sidebar on my main shop page. Now, in the filters type setting, I have one more option, WooCommerce sidebar widgets. But let's look at these filter types one by one. I start by checking the settings in the gem filters. It is important to note that the gem filters are Ajax filters. This means that by filtering the products my shop page is not being reloaded, it increases the user experience significantly. Here I can choose between three different filter styles, depending on where I wish to place my product filters. In the filter by categories group of settings, I can activate the filter by categories, show or hide categories hierarchy, add product counts, and control the appearance order of this filter in the filter bar. Let's continue with filters by attributes. As you can see, here I have a repeater control where I can add as many options as I wish. Each of these repeater items has a setting to select the attribute and the query type. Additionally, I can enable filter by price, filter by product status, and add the product search in the filter bar of my shop page. Great, now let's explore the second filter type option I have mentioned previously, filtering by using WooCommerce sidebar widgets. First I need to add sidebar widgets to my WooCommerce sidebar. I go to Appearance. Widgets. Here I see the WooCommerce sidebar, which is currently empty. Okay, now I add some WooCommerce filter widgets to this sidebar. I start with product search. Then I add product categories. Filter by price. And filter by attributes. I wish to have three attribute filters, so I add this widget three times. Good, now let's go back to the theme options. As I have already mentioned, to be able to use filtering using WooCommerce sidebar widgets, I need to activate the sidebar here. Now, in the filter types, I select WooCommerce sidebar widgets. By default, this type of filtering doesn't use Ajax technology. However, I can activate it in Ajax filtering. That's all. Let's check the filter on the front end. Great, everything is working fine. The styles of the product elements appearing in the shop grid like product titles, product categories, price, buttons, icons, and labels can be adjusted in theme options. WooCommerce. Element styles. Here each element has its dedicated group of settings, named products grid. Please note. The same settings are applied as default style settings to the product's grid content element in the editor. Of course, all these default settings can be easily customized in the editor. Now, let's check how to control the other parts of the product archives like menu and header, title area, and footer. By default, header, Title area and footer settings are inherited from the global website settings set in this categories of theme options. However, these settings can be individually adjusted for product archive pages, like product categories. In theme options I go to archive pages. Product archives. As you can see, each part of the product archive page has a dedicated group of settings. 
For example, if I want to customize the menu and header appearance on all my product archive pages, I enable the global settings for all product archives in the menu and header section and adjust the settings to my needs. Please note, these settings are applied to product archives, like product categories, but not to the main shop page. As we have seen in the beginning of this tutorial, just like any other page, the main shop page inherits its settings from the global website settings set in theme options here. These settings can be individually adjusted on the main shop page using the gems page options. Exactly as in the case of the main shop page, I can adjust these settings for individual product archives as well. I just need to open the edit page of the product archive I need to customize. Scroll down to page options. And here I can make individual adjustments for the selected product archive page only. These settings will override the settings made in theme options. Great! Let's recap what we've learned in this video tutorial. We have seen how to create and assign the main shop page. How to set up the main shop grid layout. How to configure the shop filters. How to adjust the shop grid element styles. How to make additional page settings for product archives. Thank you for watching.